Alrighty. We've got an... Hold on, I'm actually, I'm gonna cut out the, like, itching my nose. It's like the opening of the video. I feel like that might not be the best. Okay. Three. Two. One. Action. Okay, so this headline definitely caught my attention. Biden's latest campaign strategy. Get under Trump's skin. The president is increasingly turning to personal, biting, and often sarcastic broadsides against his 2024 Republican opponent. This is what we needed to see from Biden. This is what I'm talking about. As President Joe Biden works to defeat Donald Trump, he's increasingly focused on another goal he thinks will help him achieve that, getting under his skin. Man, my nose was itching like crazy there. I tried to ignore it, but like I could feel whatever was causing the itch. Like in great detail. In recent weeks, both in private and public settings, Biden has ramped up personal, biting, and often sarcastic broadsides against his Republican opponent, targeting his financial challenges, his campaign tempo, and even his weight. Oh no. I don't like fat shaming, but if, if we're going to be okay with it being done to anybody, it, it's Trump. It's Trump. Like, that, it, that, that's, that's strategical, okay? That's a strategical uh, use of fat shaming. Listen, Trump fans and Trump himself, blow your nose. It's not that. It's literally, I have nose hairs in my nose that I've I've not, like, some, usually what I'll do is I'll take tweezers and I'll just, like, rip all my nose hairs out with them. And it's been a while since I've done that, so now they're tickling the shit out of my nostrils when I speak. Uh, very unpleasantly. There's nothing in my nose. Um, anyway. It's a strategy largely driven by Biden himself, according to multiple aides that, and advisors, familiar with the approach. Quote, this is him, and we're following his lead, one Biden aide said. Quote, there's just something about Joe Biden that gets under Donald Trump's skin more than anybody, and I think Joe Biden knows that. At a star-studded fundraiser in New York City on Thursday evening that brought in $26 million for his campaign, Biden was asked what was at stake in the 2024 election. After giving an answer criticizing Trump's positions broadly, he concluded, all the things he's doing are so old, a little old, and out of shape. Dude. It's a hard con- uh, An ad? Really? I have to listen to an ad before we watch this clip. Okay, we have to wait 30 seconds for this ad to end so we can watch this clip of Biden. Can, 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Very nice. Very good. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Great. Okay, here's the clip. Biden roasting Trump. Let's hear it. With a dramatic flourish. Three presidents emerged. Democratic donors posted their images of oh my this God, it's the boys at a glitzy New York City fundraiser, needling a fourth president, Donald Trump, with a twist on the sensitive issue. Dream blunt rotation. Don't even lie. Dream blunt rotation. Imagine getting high with Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden just getting fucked up in just a chill private blunt rotation. Imagine the types of things you would get to hear. Imagine getting to be, like, the third, the, the fourth person in that, like, four-person circle. Legendary blunt rotation. ...of age in this clip released by the Biden freedoms, campaign. The I mean, all the things he's doing are so old. Speaking of old. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's a little old and out of shape anyway. Tapping into the political skills of Bill Clinton and Barack Obama to sell the Biden agenda. Democrats looking for a counterpoint to polling that shows voter frustrations with President Biden. You've got record breaking job growth. You've got an. But Obama is going to be on point here. Obama is going to be 100 percent on point here. As much as you may not like Obama and you might find this cringe or whatever. Yes, it's Colbert. Um, he's going to be on point here. All the data, like every bit of economic data in regards to like tracking the country's progress in regards to like recovery from Trump's presidency and COVID, um, it's been unprecedented growth and recovery. The problem is there's no 
magical switch Biden can flip overnight to overhaul and like reform the entire country and every broken system. But if you have genuinely followed the news and have kept up with the executive orders, bills, permits, etc., that Biden has passed, you will be mind blown at how excessively progressive he has been. Biden ran on a campaign so much less progressive than his actual presidency has been. How many of you guys expected him to be as pro-union as he ended up being? He didn't run on being pro-union. At all. He has been surprisingly left-wing at every turn, and yet despite that, at least among young left-wing voters, and especially among normies, there has been a lot of disapproval of him. Among normies, it's because he's old. Among young people, it's because of his handling of Israel-Palestine, and because those people will literally never be happy with how he handles it. Biden could literally resurrect every dead Palestinian child from the rubble, like Jesus Christ, and they would raise the bar higher to justify not just not voting for him, but shaming anyone who says they will. ...with President Biden. You've got record-breaking job growth. You've got yep. an unemployment rate that is as low as yep. it has been. For African Americans, by the way, the lowest on record ever. Yep. Tickets started at $250, but donations soared as high as a half million for the star-studded night. The event raised $26 million. While outside a large and loud protest over President Biden's policy on the Israel-Hamas war. <clears throat> Meanwhile... It's so crazy, too. None of these people care about anything. Also, I'm going to hit you guys with the scalding hot take. A substantial amount of pro-Palestine advocates online are full-on anti-Semitic pro-Hamas people. Um, like, much in line with Hassan. Um, that exact protest... Um, had pro-Palestine protesters screaming the case slur at journalists and, uh, Democrats. Let me see if I can find the, uh, the clip. The clippity-whippity. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Here it is. Oh, I can't find the one... I think maybe they yell it in this video, but this is the protesters outside the Biden fundraiser chanting, enjoy Trump winning. Because for them, Trump winning is a punishment that they want to instill on the Democrats. This TOS? I don't think they scream the slur here, but you're right. I probably shouldn't show that clip, too. Enjoy Trump, because we're not voting for Biden ever. Enjoy Trump. We hope you love him. Don't be the same. We're not voting for Biden. Enjoy Trump. We're never voting for Biden. Y'all pay for dead babies. Y'all pay for dead babies. What's wrong with you? How much money did you pay Joe Biden? We're not paying for dead babies. Okay, thank you for telling the IRS you don't pay taxes. They will be on their way. A lot of older Jewish and Arabic voters are for Biden, older than 35 years old. This is literally all just a smoke screen that dumb fuck young people are making. The same thing happened in 2020. You had this massive push online from young Bernie bros saying that like Bernie had record breaking um, POC support and that it was going to win him the primary. And then um, Bernie loses the primary because Biden was actually the one with the record breaking POC support. And then they all said, we're not going to vote for Biden. Black people aren't going to vote for Biden. Brown people aren't going to vote for Biden. Biden is a white supremacist candidate. And then Biden won the election with record breaking black and brown votes. <laughs> it's all just LARP, okay? These are politically insignificant, never voted in their lives, whiny little LARPing dumb fuck internet lefties. That, it, that this is the first time they've felt the outside air in months. But yeah, you have to remember that for, for these people that, like, don't see reason and don't care about, like, Biden's performance, like, this list of things that... that Barack Obama lists, which are 100% true and not just like 
lie Democrat propaganda or whatever. Um, they're just verifiable. Google it if you're not too lazy. Um, they will just say whatever. I don't care. We're not going to support genocide. Do, do they think Trump won't do the genocide harder? Because Trump's campaign is promising to support Israel at every turn in their annihilation of Hamas, quote unquote. Um, Biden has been the one spearheading the peace talks to create a ceasefire between the IDF and Hamas. Voter frustrations with President Biden. You've got record-breaking job growth. You've got an unemployment rate that is as low as it has been. For African Americans, by the way, the lowest on record ever. Tickets started at $250, but donations soared as high as a half million for the star-studded night. The event there raised a lot of celebrities $26 there. million. Dollars. Remember, the, the like Republicans are losing money badly right now, too. While outside a large and loud protest over this is the President protest Biden's I you the policy clip on the Israel-Hamas war. Meanwhile, former President... Remember, by the way, these are people who say enjoy Trump because we're not voting for Biden. These are people who, with saying that, are indicating that they either think or know they are not affected by a Trump presidency. So either A, they're not American, or B, they're so politically illiterate that they, to them, politics is nothing but the internet culture war. And what, like, their favorite lefty figure, these are all Hassan fans, you know, for a fact. Like, those young people, that guy, definitely a Hassan fan. It's just, these are the types of people who don't care about politics outside of virtue signaling how virtuous they are. It's, they're just virtue signaling. This is the definition of virtue signaling. V not voting Biden to spite Democrats because Democrats are the less in support of Israel party compared to the Republicans, but you still aren't okay with that, does nothing. And saying that you don't care if what you do does nothing and makes no difference, that's, many of them just admit that. And that indicates to me they're just not good people. And Trump created his own contrast, joining mourners grieving NYPD officer Jonathan Diller, who was shot and killed, the suspect a repeat offender. Mr. Trump slamming President Biden for not directly reaching out to the Dillers. They could have called. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know. Even a call would be perhaps nice. I'm not sure. There's this really weird, like, thing in politics where there will be a person. There, there's, like, countless people killed every day, at least in America, um, and, and certainly all around the world. And... The president is obviously not expected to comment on every murder or killing, even of a cop or of a child, that occurs in the country. It's usually, like, expected if there's, like, a big disaster, like a school bus drives off of a bridge and all the children on board die. Like, the, the president will make a statement on that. Um, besides that, the president isn't expected to make a, a statement on every tragedy that occurs unless it has some form of political something to it, right? So clearly the reason why Trump did this is he found like, oh, here's an opportunity. A random police officer was killed. Oh, and by a repeat offender? Perfect. Awesome. We can use this to make the case that the criminal justice system isn't harsh enough. And then from there, like Trump's able to make this whole like, I care about people thing. And then why isn't Biden here? The only reason anybody knows about this guy outside of his local community is because of Trump looking for something to cover that would make him look good. The same goes for, like, the Democrats do this, too. This isn't just a Republican thing. It's just this really weird thing that happens in politics. So don't see this as a gotcha that Biden didn't speak on this. The president is not expected to speak on every tragedy. Trump is only speaking on this to make a political statement, which is, why isn't Biden speaking on this? Should they take his call? And new in the Georgia election interference case, Mr. Trump's lawyers are asking an appeals court to remove Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis and to dismiss the case. Tom? Of course they are. Uh, of course Trump is. That, that, that should not come as any surprise, frankly. Biden also took a jab at the former president's physical stamina while telling a story recounting a brief conversation they had about golf at the White House shortly after Trump's election. I told him this once before, when he came into the Oval, before, when he was sworn in. I said, 
I'll give you three strokes, but you carry your own bag. Biden uh, said two laughs. The president came up with those jokes on his own, according to two aides and a senior advisor. I mean, take that as you will. Who pointed out that Biden is often using similar quips in internal staff meetings. Maybe Biden's actually funny outside of, like, his more rigid presentation. The president... Oh, sorry. Um, he comes up with these off the cuff, one of the aides said. Earlier this month, the president also directly addressed Trump's legal woes and financial issues, saying, quote, the other day a defeated man who was, quote, crushed by debt had approached him. Quote, I had to say, I'm sorry, Donald, I can't help you, Biden told a group of donors in Houston last week. I saw that clip. That was actually a really funny clip. Did they include that clip? Ah, oh, they don't. Hold on. I want to finish this segment off by showing that clip. It's pretty good. Damn. This is a big drawback, too, is that the, like, Democrats don't have much of a presence on the internet. They, they really don't. But if, if, if anybody could find that, that qu like, quip, it's really good. I've seen it on video. I don't know where. I don't even remember where at this point. It must have been recently. Um, ah, oh, man, that sucks. But yeah, apparently Biden is switching up the strategy and getting a little more personal with Trump and, and using some of his own strategies against him and going after him with personal attacks. So will this actually work for Biden is the big question. What do you guys think? I'm curious to see the comments on this one. Do you think this makes Biden look better to you? I imagine many of you guys already think that Biden looks good to begin with, but I'm curious. I genuinely am. Comment down below and let me know in chat if you think that this makes Biden look better. Like, being willing to go after Trump, like, going for the throat a little bit, get, playing a little dirty, you know? Not just being a stiff politician.